know, we now have a bit of an understanding about Blue, t uh, blue Mix from IBM from last week. Um, and we covered at that sort of workshop session the access through blue, to, uh, blue Mix into sort of things like sensor networks and the Internet of Things side of that, uh, the, the um, course. And as a result of what we learned then and the fact that Russ, Ross is going to come back again in about three, four weeks' time to take us through another major area of uh, Blue Mix, particularly that relating to the analytics capabilities of some of the products related, att attached or associated with the Watson engine. We thought we'd take the opportunity to have a, another look at the assignments of two courseworks. And first of all, to go through the uh, article side, but coursework one, uh, there's a new version of the assignment specification there that amplifies uh, the, the whole purpose behind the, the uh, assignment and the sort of things that you need to be thinking about. And then I want to talk a bit, uh, us to have a discussion about what we're going to do with coursework two, which is building uh, some sort of Bluemix related mechanism that takes some data in and then you join it with other data and come up with some rather interesting insights. And some of the sessions over the next few weeks that uh, Dennis is going to be leading are all to do with the ways that you can find data, the ways that you can then gain insights through visualization and dashboard and that sort of thing. One of the major reasons why we're videoing this series, and I'll put the links up because they're on a different place from usual, uh, is so that A, you've got something to refer back to, but more as importantly for some colleagues of ours in Dakar in Bangladesh. They are running the same module two weeks behind us, so this is going to give them some ideas about what we're really trying to do and why we're changing what we'd originally planned, albeit in slightly uh, in some small ways, but they're important enough that we're changing your submission dates by two, three weeks um, so that you've got time to do the work properly. Now this is the <coughs> beginning or is the definition now of the, <coughs> the first assignment. <coughs> Both of the assignments have the topic of big data analytics and the Internet of Things. In other words, sort of, this is a whole broad, broad area. And what we're looking at for this module is technology and data integration to gain or to develop smart insights. Now, to start with, you're going to need to um, refer to the 13 Vs of big data. And as you know, Big data started off uh, with three Vs some years ago, which were the volume, velocity, and variety Vs. And then IBM developed a fourth V, the value one. And one or two other people, organizations, came up with veracity and perhaps variety to give us about five Vs. Now, the first three, velocity, volume, and variety, were there as a definition of what big data was considered to be about. In other words, the volume was bigger than we knew how to handle with existing technology. The velocity, it means the transactions are pouring at, us at an incredible rate. And if you think about Twitter as a great source of big data, it's coming at fantastic rates. I can't remember what the number is, the number of tweets a day, but it's in the billions. And variety is rather interesting. <clears throat> because the world had got used to a fairly limited range of sources, fairly well-structured um, relational databases and other such things inside corporations. And then the internet happened. And then we started sort of sp storing stuff all over the place. We started getting text all, o all over the countryside. And whilst we knew how to handle uh, relational tables, 
joins in or outer, and all the other things you can do with relational tables and arithmetic with numbers, it's much, much more difficult to do that with text. It doesn't work in the same way. And so that really reminds us that <coughs> we've got not just data in a structured form, but unstructured, uh, and so on. And then all the rest are really questions. They're not definitional. They are questions that we need to be thinking about as we look at our data, we look at our technology, to try to come up with something that's quite useful. And the, most of these ones were generated by your predecessors last year and the year before in enterprise systems and information security and assurance, as we were looking at what is the nature of big data in the context of small, medium-sized enterprises. And the point about these is they actually are, help you to ask questions. There are no answers here. These help you to find the right questions in the right context so that by looking at what you're trying to do, you can make some good decisions. Not necessarily the best decisions because, you know, best is the enemy of good. You can put too much effort into trying to find the best or the perfect solution, <coughs> by which time the, the question has gone away. So find a good answer that is reasonable, that is helpful, um, but don't try and keep going with those extra... 10 years worth of effort to get a 5% improvement in the answer. You're trying to get straight to a good answer that at least can help the business or the organization move forward. So I want you to use these as a way of looking at the whole of this assignment as you assess the types of information you want to do, the way you want to connect to the data kind type of projects and use the uh, data for humanity principles. I gave a presentation or a workshop in Maribor in Slovenia uh, early in August, and you'll get the whole presentation, all the documentation there, and that includes a whole set of uh, slides on these 13-14 Vs that give you some sort of inclination or intimation of what's actually behind those questions. On top of that, as you look at the question of that data and inter technology, integration of technology and data for smart insights, you need to ask yourselves questions like, what do we mean by a smart insight? So you might want to look at the definitions, the context of these types of projects. And then, so you, know, you might do in Google a Google search for define smart insight. And then you'll get a whole lot of definitions there that you can sort of look at and critically evaluate and come up with your own synthesized definitions that you want to use as a basis of your article. So that the reader, that's me, that's Dennis, and <coughs> all those other people out there who are going to read your articles can understand exactly where you're coming from in your definition of a smart insight. Another topic that you'll want to be thinking What's your definition of a smart insight? Because I googled this and didn't find too much. I haven't actually bothered to go and look for definitions yet, so I'm relying on you guys there to come up with There are some around there. Well, <laughs> there'll be different definitions of smart, you know. Uh, if you put it in SMART as capitals, there's lots of uh, definitions of what we mean by smart in that concept. I mean, I've mean, got smart goals and that kind of thing, but I don't know if that's what you're getting at. Oh, what, sorry? Smart goals for that, a You could use that specific, smart, et cetera, et cetera. that sort of thing, yeah. You could easily use that approach, yeah. um, smart goals. Um, and that could be applied then to you know, how you're getting the insights, understanding of what the data means, what they, how you turn that inf data into information, and then from there through into understanding and intelligence and so on. Good question. Go use your... I want you guys to have as open an approach to this, it's because like all things that I run, I propose open questions so that you can find out, you can make the project, the uh, assignment your own. So we've got maybe 13, 14 different approaches, that's great, because then we can pull it together and other people can then see how um, there are different perspectives. We then need to think about sources of data which are suitable for public benefit. So that's the data kind uh, project connection. 
So you'll probably be wanting to look at the concept of what an open data source is, um, what the Internet of Things and sensor net networks are all about, how, why they're being developed, what they're going to do for us. And as you apply the V's to in the there, you're think, looking at things like validity and uh, verifiability. You're looking at questions, particularly with well, all of these, all of the things like time dependence. If you're looking at Twitter, people tweet all the or some people tweet all the time, but do they maintain a consistent perspective, or do they say one day they love this thing, and then the next day they say they love it in a very ironical fashion? They just hate it now. So that's the temporal changes, the variability that we as humans are quite variable. That the fact that sensors vary in their um, their, uh, their uh, position, they can sort of move slowly, they drift there. Um, <clears throat> and so one day they're ac perfectly accurate, once they've just been sort of uh, um, set up, but then over a period of days or weeks, their they're, um, settings drift. How, can, how long can we rely upon the sensors? Uh, we know, for example, that with electronics, devices and chips, they suffer from an early mortality, some of them suffer from early mortality, so a few will break very, very early on. The re ones that survive that first few hours or few days of running or weeks will then be reliable for, or for at least work for the next few hundreds of thou or thousands of hours without too much uh, problem. So what source types of data, what sources, where can you find these open data sources? The third stage in your assessment of this for the article would be to think about software technologies. And you know, you've, you've, now you've got access to Bluemix, you can see all the types of technologies that are there, from Node Red all the way through to the cognitive stuff under the Watson section, where there's all sorts of things, and you can read about and research into what these various bits mean and do for us. You could even compare between SAS and, and IBM Bluemix as well, because they're different. They do different things. Uh, they're packaged in different ways. So you need to be thinking about what, with the different types of data, what sort of analyses are going to be useful. How should we store the data? Uh, and as you move into some of these things, you'll find thi uh, things like the traditional. SQL relational databases, you'll find NoSQL, you'll find text, you'll find all sorts of things, time series, mechanisms. Databases are designed for all sorts of different types of data. All sorts of tools for doing different things. There's text analysis, sentiment analysis, time series analysis, etc., etc., etc. And you also need to be thinking about the fact that with 80% of all the data around us in, in, the, um, in big data, 80% is of uncertain veracity. <coughs> in other words, we don't know how much of that data is true, absolutely true, how much of it is absolutely wrong, or how much is kind of wrong, but, not, but we, uh, we don't know quite how much it's wrong. So if we go back to location services, we know that these devices, smart devices, with uh, assisted GPS, some of the data is absolutely perfectly accurate within almost inches. Some of, most of it's within 25 meters accuracy, 85% roughly of the data we've got so far. But then there's a the 15% where we have absolutely no idea whether it's 25, 30 meters error, 150 meters error, kilometers error. And so we need to think about how we clean up the data and to what extent we need to clean up the data in order to have a useful set of data that we can start working with. And what, if you're thinking about text analysis, Twitter analysis, one of the problems there is that our tools, with a limitation of 140 characters, <coughs> where the spelling is probably fairly so idiosyncratic, did squeeze the message into that tweet, where there, is almost, there are almost no grammatical rules in the way we write <coughs> our, twi our tweets. That we kind of get rid of English grammar. Machines don't understand the meaning of words very well, even though we see Siri, we see, um, of course, 
Cortana, we see uh, Watson um, voice recognition is getting better in areas where we've got well-structured text, particularly for Watson. But in Twitter and in tweets, irony is a really difficult problem for machine, uh, machine uh, text recognition. So there's all sorts of things in there that are causing real problems to guys out there in the real world trying to use social media, use text analysis and so on. How do we then connect disparate sets of data together? So, for example, in the financial services world, uh, they try, they're beginning to try to connect your bank account details or your uh, credit rating details uh, in the various credit rating organisations of which there are three in the UK. They want to try and connect your details to other sources of information out there in social media. But the question is, if you've got a common name, say like John Smith in the UK or John Schmidt, or, or something like Schmidt in uh, Germany, the question is, how do you know which of the thousands of John Smiths in the UK is, has a social um, network account which connects correctly to this bank account? Because we know that there's a big problem there. We know that if you're only connecting on the family name and given name, so which is yourself, there may be quite a lot of them, and there are likely to be several with the same date of birth. Then how do you connect? Because on Facebook or Twitter, we do not put our national insurance number. So that would be kind of crazy. So how do you do that? Because what's the comeback, or the problem then becomes, a company makes a, an adverse credit rating decision on invalid data, we're going to get, as customers, going to get really upset, and they're going to get hammered with quite ex expensive lawsuits. So what are the issues to do with data integration? Now, if it's just a location service, or you've got some data with uh, latitude and longitude, it's fairly easy to then connect that into mapping. I'm just presenting it there, at least where it uh, claims to be sitting. So some issues relating to the data that you want to use What are the issues in terms of data integration? Is it technology issues or is it data content issues? They're going to give you a problem. Then you need to think about, okay, so what's the shape of the data I'm using that I want to use? How am I going to analyze the data? What's the best type of tool? Which part of Bluemix is going to be the right bit to use? And then having got the analyses, it could be a statistical type of analyses or it could be <coughs> In, in really complex statistics, or it could be very simple, histogram type, how am I going to present it? What's the best way of presenting it? Is it a wavy line? Is it a pie chart? Is it a bar chart? Is it a mapping representation? Is it sort of a partially a map with lines joining things as things move away around or are connected together? What's the best way of presenting it? Where can I find those technologies that help me and the software that helps me to actually do that? So far, three parts to the assignment. What do we mean by smart insights? What source of data might we be thinking about using? How can we do that best? How can we then find the right technologies that help us do it? It could be software technologies. It may have some implications in terms of hardware technologies. That's up to you to find out. And then the final section at the bottom is to think about those data for humanity principles that we, we've got there. Starting off with that very first one, do no harm. So thinking about then from those types of projects down to here, what are going to be the benefits of this particular approach to analysis? What are the constraints? What's stopping us from doing what we want to do or what we would like to do? And then refer to sort of the various ethical and governance issues you've got with that data. Because if you and connect across to sustainable information corporate governance, as we're developing our understanding of what we should be doing in terms of information governance, that bring those across from that module into this module. And then you'll have a few conclusions. Um,
about the topic. I haven't quite finished that bit off, but basically you need to put some conclusions about what your project is, um, the sources, and just basically briefly summarise the most important points of the um, of your conclusions that pull that whole thing together. So you've got four, <coughs> basically four or five sections. Let's just check. You've got an introduction and definitions, sources of data, technologies to be integrated, and you know the impact of data humanity principle uh, on the whole project. So that's what your site, the course what one's all about. Very very open so that you can choose projects that you want to evaluate uh, that are really interesting to you in your own context. <coughs> Questions on that so far? Is that reasonably clear as to what we want you to do? And then if we look at the uh, gr grading, the usual 20% for using uh, the LNCS template and the usual formatting, and then just two um, columns for evaluating what you've written. One is to do with the argument, one to do with a topic. And novelty is really critically important if you want to aim for the 95%, which is you know, the way to choose your topic. So think about the novelty, and you've got the novelty criteria on uh, the second document in the assessments folder, for, for this one. And you know, we'll be looking at it in terms of the quality, the external quality that um, in relation to publication uh, under topic analysis. So that's how it's going to be done. So I think you, you may, you're probably seeing the same uh, grid in other assignments this semester and next semester. Questions, first of all, on that one? Or are you happy? Are we choosing one particular project then? No, we are interested in, or is it? it? I think to make it easier, you need to provide a fairly tight focus because you haven't got yeah. a huge amount of space to write it on. You've only got, what, about four or five pages, if I remember correctly. Um, what's it say? Four. It's four pages plus zero lines minus ten lines. So it's a fairly tightly written. So focus. just choose a single focus. You need to think of a single focus, yes, very much so. That's yeah. the advice. If you do it as a broader picture, then I think it's going to be very difficult to meet that four-page focus. And the, I suppose the, the main aspect of this, is like, well, one of them is obviously the ethics. I know in um, Information Governance, that module, there's a, a brief mention of the ethics there as well. Yeah. Would we, is it going to be an issue if we cross-reference in our first assignment? Start talking about as it, long it, as you don't well. use the same words in your yeah. two assignments, that's then, not going to matter. In Information Governance, I was going to reference uh, data kind and... Um, Quietly, you guys, listen. Data for humanity in that yeah. assignment as well. That's a good idea, yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to be introducing the... the Data for Humanity principles in ICS this um, next week. Okay. So, uh, as a focus for all of our students, is these principles are really quite useful. It's a bit like looking in robotics, is the Asimov's three laws of, ro of robots. Uh, it's the same sort of principle to find an overarching sort of theme that pulls everybody together and gives us a really interesting way of looking at everything that we do within the field of analytics, in the field of computer science, and so on. Anything else about the this particular part of the assignment, uh, this particular assignment, folks? Uh, chair, do you need to, we, in an assessment, do you need to talk about big data, or you could stop it? Then. Uh, well, the top, for top of the title, top of the assignment is um, big data in the Internet of Things. That's more to say, <coughs> this is the broadest part of the picture. You can go to the Internet of Things sensor networks, or you could go for the bit. The big data in other senses, you know, so maybe Twitter or maybe social networks, or it could be video analysis, who knows? Or analysis of vast loads of uh, photos. Um, it's to give you the broadest picture. You don't have to concentrate on pulling big data and the Internet of Things together. It's to give you the opportunity to use one or the other, or if you feel that you can connect the two together, do that. You know, there's sort of, you've got lots of options here. It allows you to use you know, your 
understanding of this field, the developing understanding, to either narrow down to a very narrow topic or a slightly broader topic. Because in principle, if you're going to work really hard and really fast technically, you could actually do some work connecting IoT stuff to bigger da big data and do some interesting analyses. But uh, we have opportunities. <coughs> and next term, when you're doing advanced analytics with um, Fionn Murto, now, you're, again, this will feed through to that because you'll understand your sources of data better and where you can get interesting data to do some, more, some stuff that leads from here into more active an analysis for those of you doing advanced analytics next term. Lots and lots of options, pulling a lot of uh, different, your different modules together so you can do some really interesting stuff by the time you get to next term or in your dissertations for that matter. I mean, that's data kind is uh, a non-profit organisation, but if you think about some of the stuff that um, county, city councils and ca uh, county councils do with some of the data they've got, or they can make available for, for us to analyse through, say, the public transparency, uh, publication of huge amounts of government data uh, by government organisations, those those that data can be used for public benefit, whether it's pothole detection, pothole reporting, or... Um, there's other stuff you can do uh, through the sensor networks about electricity generation, through um, maybe the panels on, on top of the houses, you could use sunny portal. Guys, you could use sunny portal because that collect, uh, publishes data from around the world uh, for, from people who are running uh, solar PV generation and wind turbines around the world. Every country in the world figures on the Sunny Portal uh, website. Okay. So there's huge amounts of sources of data. There's vast amounts of uh, government data uh, out in the, the uh, states. UN publish a huge amount, the World Bank, and so on. Everybody now is putting huge amounts of data out there, which can be analyzed in all sorts of different ways, and you can do it. And the intention of the data humanity principles is <clears throat> when we start doing that analysis, we should be thinking about giving somebody a benefit. And again, go back to stakeholder analysis from IT services management in second year and think about who are the stakeholders who can gain benefit uh, as public stakeholders. So it's not sort of a commercial individual enterprise, it's more than it's It could be. I mean, if you think about the government's principles uh, from that we looked at, what, yeah, last week? The, or the week before, about the responsibilities of directors. In the UK Companies Act, with section, uh, what is it, section 174 or 72, and it says, you know, directors have a duty of responsibility to consider the long-term success and sustainability of their organisation, and then to consider as well the impact of their decisions on their employees, and there are other stakeholders such as uh, society, the government, and a supply network. And at the very end, almost missed out, the shareholders of the company. So the UK Companies Act really makes it very clear that corporate directors have a lot of responsibilities to other stakeholders other than themselves and the shareholders, including society whether well, it's corporate social responsibility, which has been a big issue for the last 10 years, is now falling off the radar, or you could be looking at things like and, um, how much of the profit of a company should go to decent living wages of their staff rather than into executive payoffs um, and bonuses and huge, uh, nice big fat uh, dividend streams. That balance. So. And it also suggests that companies like Facebook and Google and so on and others should be thinking about paying a reasonable amount of tax rather than, as Facebook have reported this year, £4,227. £4, yeah, quite. Now, here's a company turning over £6 billion roughly in the UK, apparently. 
and they've paid £4,000 in corporate ta corporation tax. And they've just given every one of their two or 300 staff in London something like 150,000 quid's worth of share bonuses. Well, they've, they've considered the interests of their shareholder, of their uh, staff there quite nicely, but they haven't thought about the wider benefits to society. So there's a lot of ways you can start connecting some of these things together. Okay. <clears throat> and if you look, for example, at public transparency data that um, I can't remember whether you looked at last year, which I forget which one you looked at, probably not, is the Derby or Derbyshire County Council and Derby City uh, public transparency reporting of um, transactions or payments over £500 each month. At the Derbyshire one, there's a spreadsheet which is about 15,000 rows long each month with everything that they spent and every bit of money that they've moved between accounts. And that's, again, a nice big source of data that you can use for public benefit, to identify all sorts of interesting things with a little bit of inspection of the data before you actually start playing with it. So, an enormous range of, sort of opportunities there, folks. Anything else on that one? Let's move to <coughs> what I want, the way I want to drive the oh, second sorry. one. Um, have we got the uh, new hand index for the draft? Oh, the hand index, yes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Where has it got to? Somewhere. It's, it's at the top of there, it tells you what it is. Yeah. Um, Tuesday evening, 10th of November, is a final draft. The session on the Wednesdays, this session on the, um, the 11th, will be a schedule to come through our office and we'll mark it uh, to the rubric as a formative review, giving you this is where you've got to so far, this is what it would score if you submitted it now, and these are things you can do to improve it. And then two weeks later, yeah, you have a chance, you'll then submit it for, final, sort of formally and finally. And then we'll mark it on Wednesday, Wednesday the 25th. So we've moved it out a couple of three weeks so that to take account of this clarification that's become obviously necessary. Okay. Two schedules will be published, uh, two submission points, and uh, in the usual sort of way. Now, I'm very much minded to provide, essentially use this pretty much as the definition of your task. In other words, telling you what, the, what things you've got to do and what you are going to be presenting to us in your presentation. So the overall, you're going to collect some data, find some data, collect some data, put it through, some Bluemix type of a set of uh, tools and come up with some smart analytical insights. You'll then create a PowerPoint presentation which, will, which you will then add a voiceover to so that your presentation lasts 15 minutes plus or minus one minute and it will actually be submitted onto Turnitin um, just after Christmas. What you will need to include in your presentation are four major sections. The first part, worth 20%, is to do with your requirements to, um, specification of your little project, the thing you're going to build, and the reasons why you're going to do that project. In other words, a justification of that project and justification of those requirements. Secondly, you will present uh, a few minutes on what your design was, the development and implementation. And then the final big chunk of what were the insights you have gained from doing little project. In terms of the technical integration issues, connecting from this bit of blue mix to that bit of blue mix, 
maybe a bit about your data cleaning or the ETL for extraction loop um, and so on. Maybe a bit about the databases. A section on data sourcing. The actual cleansing activity as opposed to technical issues relating to it. And then any issues relating to this integration between your multiple data sets. Your analytical insights. What have you gained? Having done all the work, put, plugging, putting it all together, plugging and playing, running the analysis, coming out with wavy lines or vertical bar charts or maps or whatever you think is the best way of visualizing the data you've got, what actually are the insights you have gained from doing the little project? And then the final bit there <coughs> is a critical evaluation of how you have embodied the data for humanity principles and what, whether they have given, put any constraints on the work you wanted to do or the work that you've done. So 20, 20, 40, so each of these will effectively get 10%. So this kind of gives you a little bit of a feel also for how much time you spend on each of these sections. And then an overall 20% in relation to the sort of quality of presentation, the way that you're communicating, um, the you, and how good the storytelling is, because again, all of this is associated with the, if you would go back to the uh, tech partners presentation, that two, two, spheres, two spheres of the, or hemispheres of the brain, do you remember the, that one? Where you've got the blue brain, which are the technical capabilities, and the green brain, which are the soft ones about things like creativity, problem solving, um, working together, uh, storytelling. We're using the green brain approach for the assessment of your technical skills that you'll be doing in there. But I'm not, we're not going to sit around and watch a, demonst a working demonstration of I plug this together with that and here it is it running like that. Part, I mean, one aspect of course is that when you do it on your own PC it works a treat and as soon as you put it on somebody else's PC or you bring it up to my PC or, or Dennis's almost inevitably something's going to break. So we want you to do the technical stuff, and there'll be lots of screenshots probably in here, or some, not too many, because you haven't got too long to do it. So it's all about a crit you doing a critical evaluation and presenting a story about your project and how well it worked, why it worked well, why it didn't work so well, um, and the benefits you got from it. So we do it, are the pre presentations being shown in front of the whole class? What we will, well, no, we, we, because of having changed it, the timing, you will be just submitting them through, um, turn it in, and then I and Dennis will do review it with a market out of li offline. <coughs> I mean, it's a pity because I would like actually to have had you presenting it because that would have helped develop your presentational skills. <laughs> However, we can't do that. Um, maybe you're all heaving a sigh of relief over that one. Yes. Now, a few other aspects about why I've chosen that. And the primary reason is this is a bit like what you might have done last year on your placement, if you had it were on a placement, um, to sort of give an overview of your project to your boss, if you've been given one. It's certainly the sort of thing you'll be doing next year when you're out there in the real world with a job. Uh, you'll be often given a project, and at some point you'll have to give a briefing to your team or to your boss uh, or his boss about what you've done, why you've done it, how well it's worked, and what the big insights were. So it kind of very much duplicates the type of thing and about the time scale that you'll be using. 15 minutes is a time scale that I have in most of my conference presentations, then followed by t five minutes of questions. So it's a sort of very, very standard sort of um, time, time scale or time frame for you to do a good presentation. It drives you to being concise because you're going to be cut off at 15 minutes plus one, perhaps. 
So it's a very, very real recreation of what you'll be doing in the future. And these sort of questions are very, very much the sort of questions that you will be getting to have to review as you present an analytics project in the future when you're getting into business. Whether you're using Bluemix, whether you're using SAS, or any of the many other products like Tableau or whatever. So this is about as close to real life as we can come up with for you. And it avoids, because you will never be demonstrating your system to your boss, or and certainly not to your boss's boss. You might do a demonstration to your team or to your uh, immediate supervisor sometimes, but mostly you'll be communicating like that. And this is what businesses really, really want. They want that blue brain, sorry, green brain, the, the soft skills, communication skills uh, to be developed. And so here we are, we're helping you to develop that. And it will be a very real sort of environment for you. And that really is the definition of the real project, the technical project, that you then critically evaluate. Now, some of the things you might find you'll have to do is you might well, as you sort of go into building a project, actually write a formal requirement spec. You might want to write a page or two of it. Because that will then help you to codify your ideas. I'm not going to assess it, but you may well need to have it there. You might have a, some sort of a, a flowchart type diagram or a connections diagram or an entity model or something as part of that, that you might put into your presentation to show this is how it really looks. You might need to have some document relating to the design or to the development, maybe a development diary. Things that worked, the things that didn't work and why, and what you did it to, to uh, make it work again. So that when you come to put your presentation together, you can refer back to your diary during your development. That's one of the things I miss most from my work at Rolls-Royce in the last couple of years when we were doing SAP implementation, <coughs> that I didn't actually have a diary of all the things that happened, the things that went right, the things that went wrong, and the time sequences. Because that would have been incredibly valuable for me here as a sort of learning um, background or learning details for you guys. But I haven't got it. And then as you go through that, you're going to probably want to write a small amount of one or two little um, sh short documents on each of those that you can then pull together into your presentation. Again, I'm not going to evaluate the, the documents you write around, around that area. But they may be useful for you as you build your project, as you run your project, as you record things, so that you can then put together that presentation and write your script, if you want a script, or you can just add lib to your slides, depending on how you want to go. Bear in mind, tight time limits. So this is probably going to be, where I've, when, I've, when we've had a little discussion, this may well end up being essentially the specification as well as the, the uh, rec evaluation requirements. Does that feel a comfortable way to go about things, folks? <clears throat> you like to have the ability to be so creative, because this is going to stretch your creativity and problem identification, problem solving skills, and a few technical skills of plugging bits of software together. Can you just clarify, with the actual use of Bluemix, <coughs> what we're actually doing with our data? Well, you've got, you're going to find some data, mm -hmm. and some of you might want to go on the sensor network thing and find some IP addresses where you can call down a, re a regular stream of data from it to go into Node Red, and then do something with feed it from Node Red into something else, maybe into a little database mechanism as you saw yet last week, that you can build up a database, and then from that read the database into one of the other analytical packages to do something with it to visualize some of the numbers perhaps. So. You'll be thinking about the data, the sources of data, and what you can do with that data in the, t in the context of smart insights. And as I say, in, in about two, three weeks' time or so, Ross should be back 
uh, to talk about using the Watson Analytics package, you know, where are those eight or ten icons that are different parts of the, IP, of the Watson Analytics mechanisms for bigger data than the Sentinel. But mind you, if you find a, an IP address out there that's pouring data, some sort of reading, all the time, you can build an enormous amount of data very, very quickly. You know, you leave it running for two, three, four days, and that will give you 24, 48, 72, basically 72 gigabyte hours, perhaps, uh, well within your uh, three, uh, what's it, 356 or something gigabit, gigabyte hours per, de per month. And so you can collect a lot of data streaming through on a, on a per second basis, perhaps, or 10 second basis, pour it into the database, and bingo. Any more questions? Any other questions that kind of are about how you want to run this? How you would like to see this worded particularly? Or is this sort of definition give you more freedom than you're accustomed to? Because again, other than the fact I haven't told you what the data is, again, this is quite similar to the sort of analytics type projects you're going to get if you're out there uh, with, uh, with a business and the, some, somebody who want, is a sort of analytics customer will say, I, I need something about this. This is the big business problem. I need to understand this. And then you just go, go and find the source of the data. And there's one occasion that um, Rolls Royce, when my boss was in who, who, who had a background in engine overhaul, I was given a project to find out what some op opportunities there were. And I had eventually picked up the job, which is how can we model uh, the costs of, uh, and the profits of overhauling engines which weren't Rolls Royce engines? Where could we find data about? Know, the, the costs of repairing turbine blades and fan blades and casings and so on. And that was a fascinating project going out to our partner airlines, our customer airlines, who did a whole lot of overhaul and trying to get them to let me have lots and lots of data, and, which we managed to pull together. And then I think I was using SAS at the time, um, actually kind of modeled what was going on so we could actually see what the profitability would or would not be. The project didn't actually happen in the end. <clears throat> but I was given just a very brief, here is the business problem, go away and do, Richard. So I had to go find sources to find people I thought might be able to help me to find other people who actually had the data in their hands, persuade them that, yes, I know it's slightly confidential, but uh, do, could you please let me have it? And then lots of holes in it, had to make guesses about uh, where, what, would fit into the holes, the missing data problem that uh, SAS talked about with missing values, all sorts of things like that. Do a lot of cleaning up the data, try to find ways of connecting it all together and come up with some of those. And so it's very, very similar to what you will get because most customers of analytics don't know really what they want. They just know they want to make a decision around this sort of area. And then it will become very much up to you if you're an analytics expert. Sourcing of data, cleansing of data, loading of data, connecting of data, modeling of data, all becomes you're the guy who can actually understand that and put it together in very much that sort of role, uh, process there. Very, very much a real world experience. And you can go out and find data wherever you like. There is so much of it out there. And over the next two or three weeks, we'll be, you'll be learning about a bit more about open data, about visualization, um, and things like that. Well, if you're happy with that, then I will tidy this up into the formal spec, and it'll go up in the next uh, two or three days. Anything else, folks?